President Muhammadu Buhari arriving the Joint Base Andrews Airport, Maryland, to begin an official visit to the United States on the invitation of President Donald Trump. The president, accompanied by the governors of Plateau, Simon Lalong, and Ibikunle Amosun of Ogun State, as well as several ministers, was received by high-powered U.S. government officials and their Nigerian counterparts, including the ambassadors representing both countries. As a mark of honor and respect, President Muhammad Buhari was accommodated at the Blair House, the official guest house of the President of the United States. There is a diplomatic significance to what is happening. This is the first African head of state, head of government to, to visit the Trump White House. And uh, this then is a pointer to two important things. One is that no matter how Nigerians, how we think of our own country, this is a hugely important country, and this recognition is being manifested by this visit. And for the president himself, personally, it is equally important that all of, of all the 52, 50, you know, something heads of state we have on the continent, that he, of all of them, has, you know, come forward to meet uh, President Donald Trump. But uh, it is important to note that beyond the symbolism of the visit. There are important matters affecting both countries that uh, are going to be placed on the table when the two uh, presidents meet. There will be a focus on matters of security and safety, a focus on trade and investment, and focus on democratic development in our country. If you recall, some time back our president had reason to openly complain that, uh, that, that we were not receiving as much as we thought we deserved in terms of support and cooperation, especially in our fight against terrorism uh, back then under the Obama period. And it would seem that uh, quite dramatically and interestingly, a lot of the obstacles are being removed under the Trump presidency and the doors are being opened and we are receiving a lot of support, far more support than probably most people had expected. Monday, the 30th day of April 2018, was the D-Day. The White House, seat of the American government, came alive as preparations were heightened to give a befitting welcome to the Nigerian leader visiting for the second time in three years. President Donald Trump was already waiting at the West Wing lobby as President Muhammad Buhari arrives at about noon. After a warm embrace, the two leaders proceeded to the Oval Office for what officials described as a restricted bilateral meeting. Especially on terrorism and terrorism related. Uh, we also have a very big trade deal that we're working on for military equipment, helicopters, and the like. We have uh, met before, we've developed a great relationship, and we look forward to our discussion today. Uh, 
very important, but again, especially as it relates to terrorism. And that's terrorism here and terrorism all over the world. Mr. President, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. 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 Thank President Muhammad Buhari and his host, President Donald Trump, thereafter joined their respective countries' delegations at the East Wing of the White House for working lunch where talks were held on areas of interest. These include security, economy, trade, fight against corruption, governance, human rights, and humanitarian crises. After the discussions that lasted about one and a half hours, President Muhammad Buhari, leader of Africa's largest economy and the leader of the number one economy in the world, walked side by side to the Rose Garden for a joint media briefing. President Buhari, I want to thank you very much for traveling to Washington for these important discussions. It's a true pleasure to welcome you to our nation's capital. Nigeria is the largest democracy in Africa. As I conveyed to President Buhari, in our discussions, the United States deeply values and appreciates Nigeria's role as a strong democratic leader in the region. The United States is currently working to expand trade and commercial ties with African nations, including Nigeria, to create jobs and wealth in all of our countries. We hope to be the economic partner of choice for nations across the continent and all around the world. And you see what's happening with respect to trade and the United States. We are being respected again. I'm pleased that Nigeria is one of our largest trading partners in the region. And we look forward to growing our trade relationship based on the principle of fairness and reciprocity. But we give Nigeria well over $1 billion in aid every year. And we have already started talking with the President about taking down the trade barriers, very substantial barriers to the United States trading with Nigeria. So we think that we are owed that. President Buhari has also taken several steps to fight corruption and improve the Nigerian business climate. And most of all to me, and again, is ripping down those trade barriers. These measures will make it easier for Nigeria and the United States companies to invest. And we will be investing substantially in Nigeria. I especially want to thank President Buhari for Nigeria's partnership and leadership in the fight against terrorism. He's been a real leader. Nigeria was one of the first African nations to join the coalition to defeat ISIS. And Nigerian forces are currently leading regional efforts against ISIS in West Africa and doing very well, as we have. Nigeria is also leading African nations in the fight against Boko Haram. We're also helping our Nigerian partners by facilitating intelligence, cooperation, and providing training and military equipment to Nigerian forces. For example, we recently sold Nigeria 12 U.S. A-29 Super Katano aircraft. It's a great aircraft. In the first ever sale of American military equipment to Nigeria, these new aircraft will improve Nigeria's ability to target terrorists and protect civilians. Nigeria is a valued partner and a good friend. I look forward to working closely with you to deepen our cooperation and forge an even closer partnership. The United States is committed to working alongside Nigeria as we seek a future of strength, 
prosperity, and peace for both of our countries. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you. Nigeria and the United States share a long history of close and cordial relations, which encompass political, economic, military, social, and cultural cooperation. Our two countries maintain a strategic partnership for peace and security, conflict resolution, as well as a global fight against terrorism. We recognize the strong United States support in our fight against terrorism and also appreciated very much the United States agreement to sell 12 Super Tucano A29 warplanes and weapons to Nigeria to effectively fight terrorism. To contain the spirit of insurgency in Nigeria, the federal government has adopted a multi-sectorial approach involving related government agencies to address the socio-economic and political dimensions, while the armed forces of Nigeria assist the civil authority to provide security and maintain law and order. As part of efforts to address emerging cases of insurgency in the country, the Nigerian military adopted counter-terrorism insurgency approach codenamed Operation Safe Corridor to de-radicalize, rehabilitate, and reintegrate willingly surrendered Boko Haram members into the larger society. This program is currently embarking on a number of projects, including skill acquisition centers and integrated farms comprising poultry, fish pond, and greenhouse farming, among others. A number of international partners, including the International Organization for Migration, have contributed to the success of Operation Safe Corridor. We indicated that we would appreciate whatever support we could also get from the United States. We express gratitude to the United States support in the reconstruction and rehabilitation efforts in the northeast of Nigeria, as well as humanitarian assistance to the internally displaced persons through agencies such as the United States Agency for International Development and other international partners. The United States of America has been, to date, the biggest contributor to the humanitarian response, and last year gave approximately half a billion United States dollars in cash and in kind contribution through the United Nations and other intergovernmental organizations. These have mainly supported protection activities, health, food assistance, and shelter. We are doing all we can to secure the release of the remaining abducted school girls from Defchi and Chibok. In this context, we will continue to welcome United States collaboration in intelligence gathering, hostage negotiations, and information sharing. The government is taking necessary steps to promote the peaceful coexistence of herdsmen and farmers by focusing on boosting security and enforcing legislation that will guarantee borders and farmers access to land. I extend sincere congratulations to President Trump and his government on the impressive performance of the United States economy under his watch. Our aim is to diversify our own economy by focusing on agriculture and food security, power and infrastructure. We have cut the importation of rice by 90%, thereby saving a significant amount of money. We very much welcome increased United States investment in Nigerian economy, especially the non-oil sector. Nigeria's trade volume with the United States stood at 6.07 billion United States dollars according to 2016 statistics and comprised 4.76 billion United States dollars 
worth of Nigerian export to the United States and 1.894 billion United States dollars exports to Nigeria. We urge greater effort to increase these figures substantially. We thank the United States government very much for cooperation we have received in our effort to recover stolen funds. Our two governments have put the machinery in place for their respective attorney generals to collaborate in ensuring the return to Nigeria of over 500 million United States dollars of looted funds siphoned away in banks around the world. We hoped that we could continue to count on United States support in this area. The government of Nigeria remains deeply committed to the principles of human rights as well as promotion and protection of people's freedom, even in the process of fighting terror. We commit to ensure that all documented cases of human rights abuses are investigated and those responsible for violation held responsible. Mr. President, thank you very much. Journalists were then given the opportunity to ask few questions agitating their minds. How soon will you be visiting Nigeria? Well, I would like to visit Nigeria. I'd like very much to visit Nigeria. It's, a, it's an amazing country, and in, in certain ways, I hear from the standpoint of the beauty of a country, there's no country more beautiful. Nigeria is in their need of the Tucano uh, aircraft to tackle uh, the problem back home. Will you be uh, kind enough to release at least two before 2020 to enable the country to tackle the situation in the country? Very soon. We're getting it approved. Part of the problem was that you weren't allowed to buy helicopters in our country, and now you are. I worked that out so that now you can buy the helicopters that you want. They weren't allowed to buy the helicopters in our country for various reasons, which, frankly, were not good reasons. But now, they get them, and they get them very quickly, and they are the best helicopters anywhere in the world. We make the best military equipment in the world, and our friends can now buy that equipment. The records show that uh, United States of America is one of the major destination countries of illicit funds and assets from Nigeria. To what extent did you discuss the need to repatriate these funds back to Nigeria? We have actually discussed all of those topics at length over the last period of time. And uh, in terms of corruption, Nigeria has a reputation, as you understand very well, for very massive corruption. I also know that the President has been able to cut that down very substantially. Uh, we talked about it. He is working on it. and. They have made a lot of progress, and I think they will continue to make a lot of progress. Uh, we have a lot of people in this country, and frankly, the country itself, that invests in Nigeria. So cutting down on that corruption element and a corrupt element is very important to us. The United States import of uh, crude oil from Nigeria has considerably gone down. Did you discuss the need for the U.S. to increase its uh, import of crude oil from Nigeria? Thank no, you. I can't tell uh, the United States what to do. But uh, luckily for us, uh, we have got market for our crude uh, oil elsewhere. But uh, the uh, progress made by the United States in technology is likely, is slightly frightening for us as uh, a mono economy. I hope technology will allow them to use our crude for its quality for petrochemicals, be it light one, vis-a-vis -vis the one they are getting from Shell. Thank you. I think maybe more than anything else, what we discussed today was our agricultural products going into Nigeria, which Nigeria wants, but we have certain barriers that don't allow that to happen. So for the good of our farmers, U.S. farmers, and for the good of Nigeria and all of Africa, it's very important that we are able to sell our great agricultural product, products into Nigeria, and that will happen, and we're going to be working on that right away, okay? Thank you all very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Shortly after the high-level engagement in the White House, President Muhammad Buhari played host to the chief executive officers of some reputed American agricultural companies. Several investment proposals put forward by the Americans and their Nigerian counterparts were discussed at the meeting 
aimed at boosting the nation's agricultural development enterprise. The Nigerian leader used the forum to challenge the teeming unemployed youth in Nigeria to seize their abundant opportunities in the agricultural sector as the bedrock of Nigeria's new economy. Some of the participants described the meeting as fruitful. We are very delighted at the meetings that have been had with these business leaders from the United States and we are looking forward to close collaboration that will result in more plants being established in Nigeria and effectively creating jobs and then achieving growth and development in Nigeria. This one means that it will help us to actually broaden the base of the economy and it is also going to help us to make sure that we just don't depend on uh, oil. You know, if you look at it naturally, Nigeria is uh, an agri-based economy, not an oil, uh, you know, economy. So, and we need the technology, we need the uh, modern way of doing things, we need training of our own uh, people. And we want to really stop that thing where we just import finished products. You know, we want to make sure that whatever is produced in Nigeria, we add value and create jobs. You know, we want to stop uh, importing poverty into our, you know, uh, country. Because when you import goods, you are importing poverty because you are depriving people of getting jobs. I think it's clear that the president has always promoted, you know, um, an action-focused uh, solution to issues. And I think... The focus today wasn't just on talking, it was really on saying what are the things that can be done and done within a short space of time that were bankable, that were, were actionable and one that he could see through as quickly as possible. And we went through a whole myriad of issues and I was particularly impressed by the amount of um, cooperation we got from the US business leaders as well as the, um, the, the, the impetus that is now focused on several key drivers. For the first time now there's a definitive plan to take gas to the north of Nigeria and that will certainly aid in the industrialization of the north as well as empower generation for the north and such that we can actually start to see more trade between the north and the south of Nigeria and obviously create more jobs for everybody. So we're very excited about this engagement and uh, we look forward to, to some tangible results from our endeavors today. President Muhammad Buhari also met the Nigerian businessmen and their American counterparts from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and Corporate Council on Africa. Representatives of the major companies such as General Electric, Chevron, Procter & Gamble, as well as Boeing aircraft manufacturers expressed happiness with the improved security situation in the Niger Delta, the promising economic reforms and the fight against corruption. Investment plans critical to the nation's economy were disclosed to the president. The highly elated Nigerian leader, however, demanded concrete measures and aggressive timetable for actualization so that the teeming unemployed youth in Nigeria can be meaningfully engaged. It was a good meeting and it was good. I think it's a win-win for, for the United States as it was for, uh, for Nigeria. And, um, you know, and there are benefits that will... Um, accrue to both sides and we saw that in the meeting that um, the um, American businesses, uh, business leaders had with Mr. President. That there's a lot of wins um, there also for the United States to push peace and security, prosperity and a safer and, uh, and better world. You know? All these efforts are geared towards um, increasing value-added production in Nigeria and also creating employment. Going forward, we expect to see a lot more good things come out of this visit. There was a clear political goodwill and commitment that has now been given by the respective governments in terms of working together towards the repatriation of the looted assets of over 500 million US dollars. Fundamentally for us, it's not just to return the money, but also to return it to use it for the benefit of the Nigerian people. And uh, Mr. President is happy. The business entrepreneurs from the US are also equally very happy and they're more than willing to partake in our roadmap for this national career that uh, government is intending to uh, put together, which will be private sector led and driven. During the visit to the United States, some Nigerians in that country came around the White House to demonstrate their support and solidarity to President Muhammad Buhari, in whom they say they are very well pleased. Most of us traveled home and we noticed the change even from the airport. The way they got loot back from 
some politicians too got me really impressed and um, sometimes when we meet here too we talk about these things so we just felt we should come together and um, show him our support you know we appreciate what he's doing even though the damage that's been done is a lot you know but at least he's doing something positive he needs time to get it done properly if we didn't allow him to do it very well hmm, we might just be taking uh, a few steps forward and many backwards again because um, there are so many people in Nigeria that are not happy with what is happening now because of their own selfish interest. Everybody sees a lot of good coming from this administration. The uh, administration is focused, administration is addressing a lot of issues that perturb us as a people, uh, irrespective of our ethnicity. And uh, Mr. President is doing a great job in that regard. That is why we are here. The system was very sick and now everybody has realized um, what, what he is doing and the magnitude of time he requires to get things accomplished. So he has my support for 2019. Without doubt, President Muhammad Buhari departed Washington DC highly fulfilled. If you look at the totality of why we're here, I think we've even achieved more than what we bargained for. He showed uh, what I would call approval for almost all that uh, the administration of President Mohamed Bari is doing. The issue of, the, uh, of security, you had the president of the U.S. saying that issues that we were even thinking will come in 2020. He wants to hasten it and bring, start bringing some of them. And he has also opened his mind to potential investment from the U.S. in Nigeria. And uh, with that kind of agreement, and will also his pass mark on the president's performance, especially in respect to handling of issues of insecurity and, of course, anti-corruption. It means that uh, Mr. President will go back and encourage to do more. Nigeria as a country was able to intimate the United States of the fact that reciprocity for us was something that was of the utmost importance. The good thing about it was that there was commitment to greater engagement between both our countries, highlighting um, security, trade, um, creation of jobs. All told, on the average, I'd say good meeting. <laughs>